Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to explain how I was cured from ulcerative colitis and kind of how that happened in the time period of my disease and how long it's been since and everything that's happened in between. So as I've said before, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in 2005 when I was 12 years old. From the time I was diagnosed and pretty much through the rest of school, I really couldn't attend school very often. I was pretty much always in flares, I was always sick, always in the hospital, or just bedridden at home. Um, I did have a few spurts of remission where I was able to attend school, be with my friends again, be in an actual classroom setting, but for the most part I was just too sick to be there. I was in too much pain and I couldn't concentrate, I couldn't be in that classroom setting, let alone all the trips to the bathroom and all of that. It just wasn't plausible for me. Junior high and high school, I had a couple teachers that would come bring me my homework, go through a couple lessons with me, and then I would just do all the work that everyone else did in the classroom, every little assignment, paper, whatever, I would have to do on my own, and then they would turn it back in for me, I would get graded, etc. Um, I had a couple semesters here and there, like the first semester of freshman year, I think it was then the second semester of sophomore year where I was able to attend in the first semester of my junior year. Once Christmas came in 2010, um, I started to go out of remission again. I started to have a flare up and at this point we had exhausted all of our options. I had been on pretty much every medication that you can think of that treats ulcerative colitis. 5-ASA drugs, biologics, methotrexate, um, steroids, they were all just not working for me anymore. You know, steroids was the one drug that when a medication did stop working and it wasn't curing those symptoms anymore, we'd say, okay, well, let's just go back on high dose steroids, get this thing under control, and then we'll see where we go from there. Well, that winter, that is what we did. From about December of 2010 and on into the beginning of 2011, I tried super high dose steroids, um, prednisone and it just was not working for me anymore. I was still having all the symptoms, so, so much pain, and so I had to go into the hospital at the end of January in 2011. They put me on IV steroids and IV pain medication, and they brought in a whole bunch of different units. At that point, my body was just completely out of whack. My kidneys were acting up again. I was spilling huge amounts of protein. I was weak. I was extremely dehydrated. Um, because my kidneys weren't working properly, um, they were pumping me with all these fluids through my IV, but I wasn't getting rid of the fluids because my kidneys weren't working. So I was just swelling up everywhere. Um, they had to change my IVs almost constantly. Finally, they did put in um, a central line in my arm so I didn't have to have um, peripherals anymore. I was just a mess, and even these IV steroids weren't working well. I had been there a couple of weeks already. We were well into February at that point. Um, we had passed Valentine's Day again uh, for three years, and then the year after that again, I was always, always in the hospital on Valentine's Day. So February was just a rough month for my disease, I guess, but because we had exhausted all of our options, there were no other routes of drugs that we could try. Uh, my doctor finally said, okay, Alyssa, the only other option, oh, there's my cat. The only other option is surgery. And that freaked me out a little bit. I had been on the surgical table a few times um, just for routine procedures like colonoscopies and such but actual surgeries where they cut you open, I hadn't had to deal with yet. And so it was a little terrifying. And the surgery that he proposed to me was a total colectomy. They wanted to take out my colon, every little bit of it, um, part of my rectum, because it was all just too diseased. My pain was not getting under control. The steroids weren't working. Come here, Callie. The steroids weren't working and um, surgery was really just my only option. And so they brought in a surgeon to come and talk to me about the procedure. Um, they explained it to my mom, they explained it to me, 
and finally it was decided that that's what we were gonna go with. I was going to have my colon removed. And because ulcerative colitis only affects the large intestine, this is considered a cure for ulcerative colitis. The diseased portion of your bowel is being removed, so technically you no longer have inflammatory bowel disease. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be awesome. It's gonna suck. It's gonna suck so bad. I'm gonna, I'm having an organ taken out of my body. Obviously I need this organ because that's what God gave me. So why is it okay for them to just take it out? How am I gonna function without that organ, without that organ that I was created with, that I need? Am I gonna have this bag on my stomach my whole life? Am I gonna always have to empty this bag of my stool? What's gonna happen to me? I can't function anymore. And as a 17 year old girl who's still in high school, that's really scary. What's it gonna look like when I'm deformed and I have all these scars, when I have a bag hanging off of me with my poop in it? Like what, what quality of life can I have? So I thought about it a lot and I prayed about it a lot and ultimately I decided that you know what, it doesn't matter because right now I have no quality of life. I am stuck in this hospital, I've been here for five weeks. Um, my life consists of coloring pictures to hang up on the walls of this hospital room to make me feel at home, to make me feel like I'm a normal person. And the fact of it was is that I wasn't normal. I didn't have a normal life and I didn't have quality of life. So no matter what they had to do, if they could make my pain go away, even for just an instant, it was gonna be okay. Um, at this point, I was on an IV pain drip with a little button that I could push anytime that I needed um, more Dilaudid. And I was on oral Dilaudid as well, and I had a fentanyl patch, all for pain management. They had brought in um, a respiratory team to help me with breathing exercises to try to get calm and get my pain under control. Just nothing was working. I was in so, so much pain. Um, my jaw would quiver. I just remember sitting there trying to sleep but being in so much pain, I couldn't get myself to sleep. So I said, okay, whatever you have to do. If you have to take my colon from me, if I have to live with a bag of stool on my body for the rest of my life, whatever. If it means that I'm not gonna be in pain anymore, then that's fine. Well, my surgeon explained to me, no, Alyssa, you're not gonna have to live with a bag of stool on you the rest of your life. There's something called a J pouch. And I said, what? Like, what is that? And he said, basically what it means is that we're gonna be doing three surgeries on you. Sometimes we can just scrunch it all up into two surgeries, but because you've been here so long and your immune system is so compromised, you're so weak, um, your body's just not functioning right. We're worried about you being able to heal with as much steroids as you've been on. Um, we're gonna do this surgery in three steps, the routine three-step surgery, which means that first, we are going to remove your colon. And during this time, um, in between surgery one and two, you will have the ostomy bag to remove the stool from your body. You will not go to the bathroom um, regularly on the toilet anymore. It will all just come out into the bag on your stomach and you'll have to empty that routinely um, while your incisions heal from having that organ removed. But a couple months after that, you will come back in, we'll take that ostomy down, that opening in your stomach, we'll take that down and we're gonna turn that end of your small intestine into a J pouch, which means that they're gonna fold it up into a J shape. I guess it's a J for me. Into a J shape, and they're gonna open it up and staple it back together and create this reservoir um, to kind of act as your large intestine inside of you. Um, you're gonna eventually be plumbed all as normal. You're gonna be all reconnected again. So the second step is to create that J pouch. And while that J pouch is healing, we're gonna bring another section of your small intestine out through your abdomen wall again for another ostomy for two more months. You'll just empty the bag every now and then, um, but you'll never actually use the restroom on the toilet until surgery number three. And on surgery number three, we're gonna take the ostomy down out of your abdomen wall again, and we're gonna reconnect that to the J pouch, which will already be reconnected to your rectum. 
and so by then everything will be working just as usual but instead of having a colon you're gonna have a j pouch you're gonna have this little pouch sitting inside you where your colon used to be and you will be like a completely new person and i said okay now i'm definitely in how soon can i do this and so they started to wean me off of my steroids to prepare me for this surgery they really wanted me to go home and wean a little bit longer and then come back for my surgery but my disease was just too far gone i couldn't get off of my pain medication I really just wasn't in any place to not be in the hospital, to not have that constant monitoring because I was so sick. So they said, okay, we're just gonna do it anyway. We're gonna do this surgery. You're not gonna go home first. We're just gonna do it right now. And so on March 5th, 2011, I had my colon removed. I will never, ever, ever forget the moment that I woke up from that surgery and saw what was on my stomach. It was mortifying. I, I was so ashamed of this thing with this bag attached to it. I didn't wanna look at it. I didn't wanna touch it. In the beginning, I had to have my mom take care of it for me because I just really couldn't look at it. It was awful. I was so shocked and kind of disgusted with myself and in disbelief at this ostomy because that part isn't the part that I had signed up for. I had signed up for the part four months later when I was totally reconnected and totally fine because as a 17 year old, I just was not ready for that to be my life. And so it definitely, definitely took some adjusting and some getting used to. Um, but you know, a few days later, I had coped with it a little bit more, um, you know, once the epidural was um, taken off, my catheter was removed, I was up and walking around, I said, okay, I can do this. I definitely still had pain from the surgery. And I'll insert a picture of what my stomach looked like right after my first surgery here. Um, I did cover up the part of my ostomy with the bed blanket there. But basically, the large incision at the bottom is where my colon was taken out from. But at first, they made those tiny incisions in my abdomen to go in there and laser um, my colon away from my fat tissue and my skin tissue, other organs, everything that it was connected to, they had to um, basically <laughs> detach it, detach it with lasers um, so they could just completely take it out of my body. And then the point where my small intestine and large intestine were, they looped that small intestine through and that's what my stoma, my ostomy, was made out of. I knew it would take time for me to get used to this, this new part of my life, um, coping with not having a colon anymore. It was huge, it was huge for me then and honestly thinking back, it's still huge. It's, the, it's one of the biggest parts of my life is um, dealing with ulcerative colitis and dealing with my J pouch. When I was still recovering from my first surgery, my GI doctor came in to check up on me and inform me that the pathology report um, of my colon tissue did come back and there was dysplasia in it, um, the start of cancer in my colon. And whew, that was something that was really hard to hear too. Um, you know, if they could have gotten my pain under control and the steroids would have worked again, then who knows how long I would have kept my colon and how far that dysplasia would have progressed or if it would have spread. Um, you know, God was just really looking out for me. I would ask him, God, why can you not just take this pain away? Please take this pain away from me. I cannot handle it anymore. And he was saying, no, my daughter, I promise I have this under control. Just stop fighting me give in and let me help you let me cure you in my own way and so you know what he did i didn't have my colon anymore i didn't have that fear of colon cancer anymore and he saved me god saved me from who knows what all um so i continued recovering from that surgery and honestly hearing that news that really made it so much easier to recover just knowing from that pathology that there was no going back from that that there was 
there really was no way that my disease could have been controlled anymore. Um, it just gave me that reassurance that we had made the right decision, that surgery was the way to go for me in that time in my life. And so 10 days later, I went home and continued recovering, um, tried to live as normal of a life as possible. I went to my junior prom with my ostomy. No one even knew. It was just hidden under my dress. Um, I went to some of my husband now, but at the time my boyfriend's races. I was at the racetrack just trying to have fun. I hung out with friends a little bit. I was definitely feeling much more like myself. I went to Florida on spring break in April with my cousin Hannah, and that was amazing. Definitely, um different because my mom couldn't be there to help me take care of my ostomy because she is an awesome woman and was still continuing her nursing degree and actually graduated um, that spring so she is just amazing even with everything I was going through um, you know she was so focused on me but also had to be so focused on her schoolwork and I just admire her so much for that and so I was just really grateful for being able to start living a normal life again, to start feeling like the same Alyssa that I had missed so much, the Alyssa that could get out of bed and have friends and go do fun things. And then May rolled around. On May 3rd, 2011, I went back into the hospital to have step two of my surgical procedures done. And that is when they took down my ostomy and created my J pouch and connected that J pouch to my rectum. So I had a whole new stoma, a whole new ostomy um, and bag to deal with. But by this time, I was used to everything. This time they only had to go in through the large incision and then obviously um, they went in at the stoma opening as well. But they didn't have to use the small little incisions anymore um, for the laser or anything. They just did it all through that big opening down low on my belly. And even though there was just that one opening, there was just as much pain as before. It was very painful. I still had an epidural this round for a couple days afterwards. And you know, it was good. My sister was about to get married that next month. It was almost summertime. I was excited to go to the pool, even though I had to very strategically buy bathing suits to cover up my ostomy. Um, I was just ready for summer. I was ready for warm sun to be able to be healthy and pain-free and lay out, do whatever, and play a waiting game until my third and final surgery. Then June 23rd rolled around. I was healing so well and doing so well that they were able to do it a couple of weeks early. Um, so June 23rd, 2011, I was officially reconnected. Oh, I don't know why it's making me so emotional. This was five years ago. <laughs> oh man. June 23rd, 2011, I was a regular human again. I could go to the bathroom. My stoma incision was completely sewn up. Um, I was myself again. I definitely this time there was much less pain, much, much less pain. Um, and I was ready to just be Alyssa not Alyssa with ulcerative colitis or Alyssa with an ostomy bag, Alyssa who's constantly in pain, Alyssa who's constantly on drugs. I was just done with that Alyssa and so excited to be Alyssa cured from ulcerative colitis, Alyssa with a J pouch. In my recovery from my third surgery was definitely much easier than the other two. Um, definitely some getting used to with using my J pouch. I did have some infection in my incision where my stoma was from some skin issues, um, but for the most part that third surgery went really well and um, my surgeon and my GI doctor said that I was a billboard patient, that I did so well and my J pouch was functioning so, so well. They wish they could just put me on a billboard to advertise um, that J pouches do work, they're nothing to be afraid of, and that they can seriously be a lifesaver. And so before I close this video out, I guess I'll go ahead and show you my current scars on my stomach, just in case anybody was wondering. So here's my stomach now. This is the scar from um, my ostomies, from where my stool used to come out. Um, pretty much all the other little 
all the little scars that they went in with to detach my colon um, are gone. And then this is the big scar uh, where my colon actually was removed from. So not too bad, that's just a nasty pants line from sitting down. <laughs> but that's it, not too bad. Thank you so much for watching and hearing my story of how I was cured from this awful, awful disease. Please share it with anyone who you think could benefit from this um, and subscribe for more videos to come. And I'll see you next time. Bye.